When you put them together, let's face it, at least 50 to 60 percent of our patients are relapsing when they relapse are due to non-adherence. And so we welcome injectable medications to prevent that. And in fact, you know, I, think I put this figure together to show how if you actually intervene after the first episode, and the first episode is the, one, the only one with the V. See that first V? It's a V-shaped recovery. We wish our uh, recession was like that. But, but the first episode of schizophrenia is the best time in life for response to literally any antipsychotic. It's a great stage. It's a different stage than the rest of schizophrenia. Unfortunately, we never capitalize on it because once you let, let the patient uh, uh, not adhere, if you don't protect them from non-adherence, and they relapse again next time, it is more, more severe and it's flatter, takes them longer to get back to their baseline, slower, and the third one and the fourth one and so on, you, you get a downhill deterioration, development of treatment resistance, the symptoms don't respond anymore as well, and you get residual symptoms. So it's really sad that, that we watch our patients relapse like this and not hold them after the first episode, which ideally is the best time in life to give an injectable for patients that you know are not going to adhere, especially young people or people who committed a crime in the first episode. They're likely to commit a crime the second time. The same symptoms recur with every episode. But look at the bottom of the curve. You see those brain tissue, the ventricles dilating, brain tissue atrophy sets in with every episode. And that is, that is really something we never knew back in the 70s and 80s uh, or even early 90s. In the late 90s, we didn't realize there's progressive tissue loss with every episode of psychosis. So it really makes a difference if you protect the patient from, from, uh, from relapses uh, to keep their brain, their brain uh, healthier and to keep them closer to their baseline so you can rehabilitate them. So periperidone uh, is a newer one. Uh, the previous one, the only previous atypical injectable was uh, risperidone constant, introduced like 2003. And then the second one, which is active metabolite, periperidone is 9-hydroxyrisperidone. So it has a 